Welcome back. It's Robbie W1RCP. And we are studying element two. That is the technician exam. And we're in sub element 5A. And we have some memorization to do here. Uh, we don't really have much of a choice but to memorize some of these things. Uh, by the way, take 1000. Okay, so electrical current is measured in which of the following units? Current is usually depicted with the letter I for current, which is an old term intensity. And that's how many electrons flow across a point across a certain amount of time. Uh, the answer is amperes. Current is measured in amperes. Question number two, electrical power. And now in the next video that you're going to see, you're going to see that I messed this up because I recorded it second and now I'm doing this one. I accidentally used power with a W. Forgive me. I'm, I'm already asking for forgiveness for the future. Uh, electrical power is, in, is usually a capital P is measured in which of the following units, and that's watts. So if you think of a light bulb, a 100 watt light bulb probably uses about 100 watts. A 1000 watt microwave, that's that much power it uses. If you have a heater that's 1500 watts, that's how much wattage or power it uses or gives off, may use more. Okay. What is the name for the flow of electrons in an electric circuit? If you complete a circuit and it has a good power source, then you're going to have a flow of electrons. And that flow of electrons is current. So current is also amperes. So don't get those, don't, don't get too crazy with it. But, you know, I'm trying to teach you more than just what's on the test. I'm trying to teach you how you can remember this stuff. Okay, so the term, what is the unit of electrical resistance? Well, resistance is usually capital R, and that is measured in ohms. And you can go check out some of these other ones like Siemens and Mohs and Coulombs, and those are also really neat, and they stand for something. Now, I will stop here and say, if you want to learn more about these units, you can take a basic electronics course book or search the internet with a reliable source and learn more about these. So we're on question five. What is the electrical term for the force that causes electron flow? Well, that force is called electromotive force. And you could say voltage V equals or E equals. Uh, on this particular exam, the ones that made this exam at the NCVEC originally had V equals I times R, but then they changed it to E equals I times R. So E is electromotive force, and that is the force that causes electron flow that is measured in voltage. So if you think about your battery, your 12 volt battery in your vehicle is 12 volts. It has... 12 volts that can force electron flow in your vehicle to make your radio turn on. Alrighty, question number six. What is the unit of frequency? Now, frequency is usually depicted as a lowercase f, and that is hertz. So the unit is hertz. H-E-R-T-Z. It hurts. Question number seven. Before we get into this one, let's go do a little silence, uh, science. So we have an atom. We're not really worried about what the atom is, whether it be a metal or a gas. Let's just think about atoms. They're made up of protons, neutrons in the middle, and electrons. And they have different layers of electrons. And if we go over here, you can see that those are electron shells. And there's a certain number of electrons that can be in each of the shells, and we're only worried about that last shell, and that's the valence electrons. If that valence shell has free electrons to give away or an empty spot to receive one, it's usually considered a good conductor. If that valence electron shell is full, then it cannot accept an electron. Those are usually good insulators. Now, there's a mix between the two, 
and they're called semiconductors. They're a whole other animal, so we'll worry about that later. Maybe when you get to the general. Why are metals generally good conductors of electricity? Well, if you go look at a periodic table and then Google one of those metals and look at the valence electron shell, then, did I say that right? Valent, valence electron shell. If you look at it, there's, there's, there's some room for some electrons to grab, grab in there, and it can give them away. So, they're good conductors of electricity because they have many free electrons. Here we go down to number eight. Which of the following is a good electrical insulator? Well, if you look at the rest of those, they're metals. Glass is the only one that is not a metal out of those choices. So, glass is a good insulator. And a long time ago, power lines were used... Uh, to insulate, they have those little glass insulators. The more you know. Okay, question number nine. Which of the following describes alternating current? Now that is current that alternates between a positive and negative direction. And, it, and usually it looks like a sine wave. If you have voltage coming from your wall, that is alternating current. Now if we go look at frequency, which is what I'm about to transition to, this is an alternating current. And you can see that it has peaks and then it has troughs. That center line is zero. That's the crossing point. So you have a positive voltage at the first red line, and then a half a second later, it goes down to a negative voltage. And then another half a second later, it goes back up to a positive voltage. and in the U.S., we have 50 hertz, uh, 60 hertz, sorry, I, I'm getting my countries mixed up. We have 60 hertz AC that comes through the wall. So for 60 times per second, it makes a complete revolution from peak to peak or trough to trough, depending on where you measure that from. So that is alternating current, and that's what it looks like. So let's go to the next question. Which term describes the rate at which electrical energy is used? And that is power. Now, don't get that mixed up with amps because power is equal to amps times the voltage. So power is an animal all to itself that's somewhat related to amperage, but don't get them mixed up. So it is not your current. Okay, so the rate at which electrical energy is used is power. That's the rate that it is used. What type of current flow is opposed by resistance? Now you're learning a little bit more about electronics. Resistance is something that pushes. It resists. It's trying to keep those electrons from flowing across it. So let's take a look. Direct current alternating current, RF current. Well, guess what? They're all currents. So all of these choices are correct. Every type of current is opposed by resistance. What describes the number of times per second that an alternating current makes a complete cycle? So the number of times per second is frequency. So if we go back to this chart, you can see that I have a time frame for the top one is one second. It makes one complete rev rev revolution from peak to peak. Now, if you look at the one below it, it says high frequency. Yeah, that's really, really high. <laughs> you can see that for the same time frame, the amount of peaks has doubled in the same time frame. So that would technically be two hertz. So low frequency, you see one passes through in one second. High frequency, you see two passes. Now, in, in real life, high frequency would be um, millions of times per second. So if your technician is 28 megahertz. 
That's 28 million times per second. Okay, so uh, if you th we won't get into that. Sorry, I, I was going to say if you think of it like a uh, revolution, that's 28 million revolutions per second. Okay, so frequency is what makes up the number of times per second with alternating current. And we have now completed this. Now, I do want to show you that there is also DC or direct current. This was not on there, but direct current is a constant voltage no matter what time. See, I took one second. See, there's no change across that time. So that is direct current, and that would be what comes from your battery. So this has been a good section. The next one, you might as well buckle up, Buttercup, because it's about to get real. Um, the next one has a lot of math and a lot of conversions. So I wish you the best. Study hard, study often. I'm Rob W1RCP. Hey, we'll see you next time. 73.